Section 7 Create Story and Give Finishing Touch We have now created a multi-tabbed dashboard. In this section, we will look at a new type of end product called Story. We will create a slideshow-like story and give it finishing touches to make it neat and ready for presentation. Introduction to Story When we try to save this dashboard, we also get one more option here in the Save drop-down called Save as Story. This is the quickest way to convert our dashboard into a story. However, in this video, we will learn to create a story from scratch and we will familiarize with the story editor. Let's begin creating a new story by clicking on the plus icon at the left bottom corner and then choose the story option. Cognos is now asking us whether we would like to start a story in a slideshow format or in a guided journey format. Before selecting one of these options, let's understand what is a story. Story is a unique offering from Cognos and it is not easy to find similar product in any other reporting and dashboard tools. It is an interactive and online replacement to the PowerPoint slides. It allows us to build the slides with animations and transitions and add dynamic contents to them. By dynamic content, we mean those figures and visualizations which automatically update when the data in the sources change or whenever any new data gets loaded. We can also change the filters in the story to change the context. For example, we can apply the filters on regions and branches so that it is specific to the audience for the presentation. In the old days, we used to create many copies of the PowerPoint presentations and then put the contents for each region or branch into those PowerPoint slides. So every time you visit a new region or a branch, you had to update the corresponding PowerPoint slide. Whereas by using Cognos Stories, all of these can happen on the fly simply by changing the filters and the contents are automatically updated. Out of the two options that we see here, the first option called Slideshow is a classic transition style where we can create a series of slides or scenes and the presentation will move from one slide to the other slide. The second option called guided journey is a transition style where the audience are guided. It starts with a full picture of the story and then each part of the story pans and zooms into the details across the canvas. For the purpose of this course, I'm going to use the classic slideshow and then click on create. Now we are presented with the story editor. This story editor is very similar to the dashboard editor. So we get same panels like the data source panel, the widget panel, visualizations panel, and so on. We also get the similar options on the top right. For example, this icon will open the properties of the story and properties of any object that we select on the canvas. And this icon is going to allow us to preview in the full screen. And we can hit escape to come back. However, in the story editor, we cannot create multiple tabs. Instead, we create the scenes by using the scene selector at the bottom. If you are not seeing this scene selector, it may be minimized, which looks like this. So you can click on the scene selector icon from the bottom to open it. Each scene is like a slide in the presentation. We can add a new scene by clicking on the plus icon. The scene is going to use the default template. If you would like to select a particular template, then you can click on the small drop down icon and then choose one of the templates for adding a new scene like this. In order to add the contents on the scene, we can minimize the scene selector and now open the data sources panel and add any data module as a data source. So please click on my contents, go to section six achievements and choose the branch costs and performance module. So we see the same module which we used for the dashboard now available in the story and here we can drag any content on the canvas 
of the scene. So let's open CA performance data table and drag invested assets. And we can see that Cognos has now used the summary widget to project the invested assets. Let's resize this widget and also add fees and commission. We can double click on the text item. So let's type 2019 annual performance. Once we have added some objects on the scene, we can again expand the scene selector. Let's minimize the data sources panel. So we have more real estate to work with. And now we will look at something called timeline. We can control in what order and when the objects will appear on the scene by expanding the timeline. For that, please click on this open timeline icon. And now we can see that there are five objects on this scene and they will all appear at the same time. And they are all going to be visible for five seconds. We can change this by simply dragging the objects on the timeline. So I've dragged them in such a way that we will first see the text called 2019 annual performance. Then after one second, a text placeholder will appear, which we have not actually used so far on the left hand side. Then we will have invested assets summary value appearing. Let's move it to one second as well. After one more second, we would have the fee summary value. And then a third second, we would have the commission summary value appearing. Currently, we can see that on the scene selector, we are only seeing the text 2019 annual performance, but we are not seeing those other controls. That is because Cognos is right now showing us how the scene or the slide will look at the zero second. This blue handle is called the timeline scrubber and we can click on it, hold the mouse button down and drag it over the timeline to see how the objects will appear at different times on the slide. We can also zoom in and zoom out into the timeline using these magnifier icons. If you have zoomed in a bit too much, you can click on zoom to fit. Zoom to fit will make sure that everything right from the beginning of the first object to the end of the last object will be shown on the timeline. We can preview it by clicking on this play button. So let's minimize the scene selector and click on the play button to play the scene. I would like to make sure that all of the contents always fit the screen. So let's open the properties, expand the canvas section and then enable fit to page. Let's play one more time. And in order to make sure that these numbers are filtered for 2019, let's open the data source, open months table and drag the year into the filter and select 2019. Whenever the data would change at the background, these numbers will automatically update. So this is presentation wherein the contents will update automatically. And you can also easily change the year or you can add more filters for regions or branches or any specific product. Let's also quickly look at the playback options. If you click on the playback options icon, you get four options. The first one called navigate markers is going to show us some markers on the timeline. And these are the markers when various objects are appearing. This can be useful if you wanted to jump back to a specific part of the timeline. The second option called play all scenes. If you enable it, then the presentation will keep going from first scene to the second scene and so on without the presenter having to click on the next scene button. Loop will make sure that as soon as the end of the last scene is reached, it will automatically come back to the first scene and loop again. This is typically useful when the presentation is put on a kiosk for displaying certain information or presentation over and over for a long period of time. And refresh at start will make sure that every time the presentation starts again, the data will be refreshed. So if the data is changing at the back end, for example, market share prices, then those changes will reflect each time the presentation loops.